Hi, I'm Chris and I'm part of Rugeley Community Church and welcome to a series that's all about Jesus. The Jesus that you never knew, the Jesus that you would really, really want to know. I have been completely radically changed, my whole life transformed from despair, from being completely lost to joy, to peace, to hope because of this Jesus. And so through this video series, I just want to tell you more about him. If you're a Christian, it's about his heart towards you. It is so strong, so loving all the time. And if you're not a Christian, then come with me to get to know Jesus better. Let me introduce you to him and how wonderful he is because he is real and he loves you and he wants to transform your life and give you hope. And to do this series, um, I'm going to base it on a book that's become probably my favourite book outside of the Bible. It was a present from my dad and when I first received it, I thought, oh man, it looks a little bit heavy. Um, but actually, when I read it, it blessed me so much. It's just all about Jesus and how wonderful he is. It's called Gentle and Lowly, The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers by a guy called Dane Ortland, and it was published in 2020 by Crossway Publishing. It looks a bit heavy from that title and that look, but please just come on a journey with me into the heart of Jesus. Let me just read the first uh, few lines of the introduction. It says, this is a book about the heart of Christ. Who is he? Who is he really? What is most natural to him? What ignites within him most immediately as he moves towards sinners and sufferers? What flows out most freely, most instinctively? Who is he? So this book is all about the heart of Jesus. And chapter one, which we'll go into straight away now, is called the very heart, his very heart. And the heart is basically the real core, the center of a person. It kind of defines and directs us. And so this is all about who Jesus is at his absolute core. And this first chapter, his very heart, it's, uh, it's based on a bit of scripture from Matthew's gospel. Uh, and it's Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. So let me read that to you, just a bit of context. This is Jesus speaking to people who have been completely oppressed and um, like put upon by the people around them. There's so much law and uh, tradition and religion. It, it's an oppressive society. And Jesus comes into the middle of it and he says, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wow, what an amazing thing. This is the only place in all of the Gospels in the Bible where he actually says what his heart is, what his real innermost core is towards people. He could have said here, I'm the almighty God and I am strict and demanding in heart. But that's not who he is. He could have said, I am glorious and majestic in heart. But no, he says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. What a wonderful thing. And this is the Jesus I've come to know and I'd love you to know or to know better. So let me just unpack this a bit. What does he mean when he says gentle and lowly? Well, just have to go back into the Greek a little bit because the New Testament was written in Greek. And when we get this word gentle, the Greek word behind that is used only three other times in the New Testament. It's used in Matthew 5 verse 5, where it's translated as meek. Um, it says the meek will inherit the earth. It's used in Matthew 21 verse 5, where it's translated as humble. It says Jesus the King is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey. And it is also given in 1 Peter 3 verse 4, where it's translated as gentle. It says the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. So meek, humble, gentle. This is Jesus describing his heart. This is God himself. Is that the God that you know or have heard of? And it says in the book, the author says, he is the most understanding person in the universe. The posture most natural to him is not a pointed finger saying, you're not good enough, but 
open arms. And that's the Jesus I came to when I was at my lowest in despair and anger. And God came crashing in and just said, Chris, I love you. At my absolute lowest, he says, I love you. And it's not a pointed finger, no judgment, just open arms. Wow, (laughs) that's the Jesus I know. He is gentle, he is humble, he is meek. But it also says he's lowly. What what does that mean? Again, going back to the Greek, um, there's this sense of um, uh, humility. But when this word is used elsewhere in the New Testament, it's used to describe people who are kind of Um, put upon. Um, They're kind of brought low by their circumstances. For example, in Romans 12, 16, Paul, who's writing that letter, he, he says, don't be haughty, don't be kind of all built up and proud of yourself, but associate with the lowly. And so what Jesus is saying here is he is accessible, he is approachable, he is not far off, he's right here. And the only thing you have to do to know him is come to him and his arms will be open. In fact, he says, bring your burdens. You don't even have to unfasten them. Come to me. It's actually your burdens, uh, all your heaviness, your sins, your failures that actually qualify you to come to him. Isn't that incredible? That's what happened with me, just completely weighed down by anger and resentment and confusion and feeling left behind. I brought that. And he didn't turn me away. He didn't say, no, I'm not interested. You're too sinful and horrible. No, he opened his arms and said, come to me, Chris. That's the same thing he's saying now. And he's not, he's, he's not just this kind of big fluffy teddy bear. When people reject him, when uh, people get in the way of people coming to him, he's, he's something different altogether. But when people genuinely come to him, he never turns them away. He never casts them out. Whatever you've done, your sins, your failures, your weaknesses, your frailties, your mistakes, he says, come to me and I will give you rest. He says, I will give you a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. And a yoke is nothing to do with eggs here. It is a bar that um, attaches the oxen, the, the animals together that would pull the heavy farming machinery through the fields 2,000 years ago. And Jesus is saying, I'm not putting anything heavy on you. In fact, give me your heaviness and I will give you a yoke that is easy. And that word easy in the Greek is often translated as kind. He's saying, I will give you a yoke that is kind and a burden that is light. It's almost like he's saying, I'll give you a non-yoke, a non-burden. Almost like, I'll give you a helium balloon that will lift you up. And the author says, lifted by his endless gentleness and supremely accessible lowliness. He doesn't simply meet us at our place of need. He lives in our place of need. Amazing. We've got to stop projecting onto Jesus these kind of skewed views of who he is, that he's just some far off absentee landlord, that he doesn't care, um, or that if he comes near us, it's reluctantly holding his nose and thinking, oh no, I don't want to get too close. No, it is the complete opposite. Jesus completely loves you and welcomes you with open arms when you just come to him. That embrace is precisely what he loves to do, says the author of this book. That's the Jesus I know. If you know Jesus, his arms are always open to you. If you've sinned, if you've fallen short, if you've made mistakes, just come back to him and say, thank you. I'm sorry for what I've done. Forgive me. I repent, which means you change your mind, you change your behavior. If you don't know Jesus and you want to, you can. You just come to him and say, Jesus, forgive me. I have fallen short, I have sinned, but I want to accept you into my life as my Lord and Saviour. I choose to follow you. And oh my goodness, you get to know this heart of Jesus, this gentle and lowly heart. And would you come on a journey with me through this series? The next chapter is about his heart in action, his compassion wherever he goes. This Jesus is wonderful. I just want you to know him more. I want to know him more. So I look forward to going further and deeper with this book and with you. Thank you.